Hi, my name's Kim Jay and I'm a visually impaired chef. I'm also a volunteer for RNIV. Now, I've written two recipe books, A Taste of Spice and A Sense of Cooking. Now today, I'm gonna to make paneer mokni. If you don't like paneer, which is an Indian cheese, you can substitute it for corn or, ch or chicken. Now the ingredients are a large tub of double cream, approximately 600 ml, about 20 grams of butter or a tablespoon of butter, you'll need salt, black pepper, chilli powder, turmeric, a handful of chopped coriander, tomato puree, about 12 cashew nuts, three cloves of garlic, three chilies. You can vary that depending on how hot you like things. About half a centimetre to a centimetre of ginger, paneer or two chicken breasts chopped up into pieces. You'll need cumin seeds, saffron and oil. And those are the ingredients that you're going to need for this dish. I'm going to make a paste now out of some of these spices. Now, if you don't, I'm going to use a, a little food processor. If you don't have a food processor, don't worry, just chop it up as finely as you can. Now, I'm going to put the garlic into my food processor, the ginger, the chilies, the cashew nuts, and half of that handful of coriander. And I'm going to blitz that up until it's really fine. Now I'm going to add in the tomato puree. You need approximately a tablespoon to two tablespoons of tomato puree. And into there, I'm going to put approximately a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of chilli powder, and approximately half a teaspoon of turmeric. And again, blitz that together and it will form a lovely spicy paste. I'm going to put the hob on and on the hob I have a large wok. Into that I'm going to put the butter and a little bit of oil. Now you need the oil in this because what it will do, it will stop the butter from burning. And into that I'm going to put about half to a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Now cumin seeds are very aromatic. They smell musky and woody and they, they are full of flavour and the moment you taste these you'll, you'll, you'll recognise the smell and the taste. It is also extremely good for stomach problems. So fabulous for that. Now you melt the butter and you can hear the butter sizzling and the smell of the cumin gets stronger. Now at this stage you add in that paste that we made or the chopped garlic and ginger and add it in. Now what you'll find is this, because the spices are cooking it will slightly hit the back of your throat and you cook those spices for a couple of minutes wow that smells amazing I've cooked this paste for about four minutes now I've reduced the heat to a medium if you've got chicken at this stage you put the chicken in and you need to be cooking that chicken in these spices for at least 15 to 20 minutes but because I haven't got chicken I'm going to put the paneer in now the paneer 
doesn't take as long to cook through as a chicken. Now if you're going to try this dish with the paneer, it sometimes comes in a block and you can, like I've done, put it into cubes. And like I did, I've, I freeze mine and it does freeze very well. Just take it out whenever you need it and cook it through. Now that, that paneer is now done. It's been cooking for literally five minutes. This dish is a very fast dish to make when you make it with paneer. And if you're doing this for a dinner party, you can make the paste up in advance and then quickly cook this dish just before you serve it. Now into this, I am now going to add the double cream. You can add as much or as little as you want. Depends on how creamy you like the dish and how much sauce. And I'm going to reduce the heat down to a minimum. What you don't want to be doing is boiling the cream too fast because it will then split and you mix it in and as you mix it in for those of you that have got colour the turmeric and the chilli powder has coloured that cream to this rich golden yellow now sometimes I will add a little bit of desiccated coconut into this which gives a much more sort of coma type a flavour to it. As you can see this dish is now rich, thick and creamy and I like a little bit more sauce so add a little bit more cream and then you add a small pinch of saffron. If you don't have saffron because saffron is expensive don't worry you can omit it but it is quite nice with the saffron in especially if you're doing it for a special occasion. Now what would I serve this dish with? With naan, with chapatis, or with rice? Rice is my particular fav favourite. It soaks up that cream, it's utterly dish delicious. And now I garnish it with the remaining coriander. Here we have it, paneer mukni. So easy and simple to do. Lovely, rich, thick, creamy sauce. Mm. Better than any restaurant. And the recipe for this is in my cookery book, A Taste of Spice. Um, well worth doing and great to impress family and friends. Now you have a recipe for a great dish. But when you're in the kitchen, there are certain safety guides and rules that you should adhere to and which keeps you safe. Now one of the things that I do before I start cooking is I make sure that I've got shoes on that are sturdy with good grips. I make sure that there's nothing on the floor that I can trip over and there are no spillages or liquid or condensation on the floor that makes it a bit of a hazard. Now before cooking the first Thing that you do as we all know is wash our hands thoroughly and especially when you're dealing with raw meat at every stage wash your hands thoroughly it stops cross-contamination it keeps you and your family safe when you're using the oven and the hob know your oven and hob really well now i use tactile markings so that i know exactly what temperature to put the oven on and what setting so that I've not put the grill on when I should be putting the oven on. Now with the hob, whenever you're sort of putting anything on the hob, make sure the handle is not sticking out. Now I like to keep the handle at approximately 10 to 12. And the reason for that is it's not near enough to the unit for you to accidentally knock it off. It is not over another hob which may be on so the handle's getting hot so this is the safest position now if you're boiling anything um be very very careful don't fill the pan up too much and if possible use the boiler alert which tells you when that liquid is bubbling away and it's hot and it keeps you safe if you're not comfortable with the hob and the oven 
use the microwave whenever you can it's a lot safer and every time you are taking things out of the oven or from the microwave because remember plates and dishes get extremely hot in a microwave use oven gloves now i like to use thermal oven gloves they're a lot safer don't be tempted to use tea towels or anything else and they literally go to extreme temperatures so you're very safe with them whenever you cut any food in the kitchen use safe cutting methods keep the blade away from your fingers so set it a, a, a couple of millimeters away from your fingers and that way you're safe all the time now if you're not confident with a knife you can use appliances like food processors make sure you know how they work properly um, and keep safe and if you're still not confident ask somebody else to do it it is better to be safe than have an injury if you have any cuts or you cut yourself whilst you're in the kitchen put a plaster on it and if you have a burn run it under cold water and if it's bad you seek medical advice straight away whenever you cook meat always ensure that the meat is thoroughly cooked because you know you know raw meat will give you food poisoning now the best optimum temperature to cook meat is between 66 degrees and 73 degrees use a food thermometer if you're not too sure they do have talking food thermometers which you can get quite easily and you store the meat as soon as you can as soon as it's cooled down store it straight away in the fridge and read the advice on storage on the labels.